Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are wanting to improve yourself, your relationships, and your life, go ahead and subscribe below or check out my blog for some more content similar to what I'm creating on YouTube. I will have it linked below in the description box. But I'm going to be continuing my dating app series with today's video being about how to spot a catfish because they are out there. There is no app that does not have them. There is no social media that does not have them. They're everywhere. Very, very common fish. So we're just going to go ahead and get into it. The first few things we're going to go over are things to look out for before you even engage with this person, before you even swipe right, before you even accept their message request, before you even respond. Um, because they're dead giveaways for a catfish. And the first one is if they only have one picture. And you might be thinking, Courtney, like, duh, if they only have one picture. But let me tell you, we make excuses for very attractive people. You know, this super attractive guy or girl pops up on, you know, either our DMs or on the dating app, and we start making excuses for them. They're like, you know what, maybe they didn't have time. Maybe they didn't have time to like upload more pictures or things. We start making excuses when really, let me tell you, honey, attractive people have probably more selfies than anyone in the world. So there is no reason anyone should just have one picture on their profile. Also, little self promo plug. If you are wondering what kind of pictures to include on your dating app, go ahead and click the little card above. Check out that video. Very, very helpful. But yes, one picture. We ain't about it, absolutely not. The second thing to look out for is sunglasses in every single photo, as well as hats. Hats in every single photo, let me tell you what it means in a girl's eyes, you're bald. And there's nothing wrong with being bald, but like if you're gonna be bald, own it. When people have hats on in every single photo, hair can really change a person's look. And sounds superficial, I get it, but at the same time, that's what it is. Whether you are on an app or in life, we look with our eyes before we even want to decide to engage with that person. So just a shout out to the guys, do not wear a hat in every single photo. You can wear it in some, but not all. Don't do it. You're hiding something. Same thing with sunglasses. I think we have learned from this past year of wearing masks that eyes, your mouth, all the features on the face can really change how a person looks. So again, one sunglass photo. I mean, if you want, I don't even think you need to put any sunglass photos because they're, it just, it's like, it's not even you, you know what I mean? So I would say no sunglass photos, but hat photos every now and then, whatever. So moving on to the next thing to keep an eye out for are pictures that are either all in black and white or all filtered. So whether they have like a funny filter on there or like the like pretty nose contouring filter, I think Snapchat does it. That person you just need to swipe on. Left, not right. Do not engage. I repeat, do not engage with the filter people, okay? Because what you see in person is gonna be quite different than what you saw in their pictures. So this is kind of a tip for people that are maybe sliding into your DMs on social media, not so much a dating app is if they have under, I would say 80 followers, they're probably not real. And the reason why I say that is I'm not a big social media person to begin with and I still have over 100 people that I follow on social media. However, if they have under 80, most of them are probably gonna be like cat accounts or like different spammy maybe celebrity accounts, but they're probably not real. So just keep an eye out for that. If someone super attractive tries to follow you, check out who they're following. And if it's like no one that's real or unverified, probably not real themselves. So I shouldn't even have to say this one, but it still happens. If a celebrity reaches out to you and they are not verified, Honey, it's not them. They did not make a Finsta or some kind of fake account to reach out to you. They are not real. It honestly hurts my heart that people are still falling for this. But this also brings me to my next thing, which is we all know kind of where we stand on the attractiveness scale. And if you are like maybe a four or five and a 10 reaches out to you, something's a little fishy. 
that's because we tend to find people and date people and marry people that are around our attractiveness level. Obviously, there are those outliers out there where it's a 10 with a 2 and that happens and there's probably some kind of exchange theory. We'll go into dating theories and what exchange theory is in another video, but if someone really attractive tries to reach out, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. So the last thing I want to mention before we get into the detective skills that you might need is if they're, all of their photos look professional, they probably are. And I don't, like the people in the photos are probably models themselves, but the person behind the profile is probably not. So just another thing to look out for. Um, but now getting into kind of the detective skills. I would do this with any single person I was going to meet up with. I would either try and find them on Facebook. I think LinkedIn is another good option. I never used it because I never personally was a big LinkedIn person, but Facebook is an oldie, okay? That is like one of the original social medias. And with that being said, everyone has one. Almost everyone has one. There were very few cases that I ran across. That's not a normal siren. Back to Facebook. <laughs> so Facebook, everyone has them. Even if they are not active on it, there is still information you can find out that is useful to you if you go on their Facebook, such as, I cannot tell you, quite a handful of times, where I would search for their Facebook. So you would just type in their name in the search bar. Sometimes social media, or not social medias, sometimes dating apps only provide you with the first name and maybe last name um, letter. But if you know information such as their hometown or maybe what college they went to or even where they work, which it is kind of creepy how much info we freely put out to the public, but anywho, better for you and you're investigating, you can just type that in to Facebook. Go to the search bar, type in maybe their first name and then under the filter, put their hometown um, or their college. You can then filter it down with the info that you do know. So you're not going to be able to find everyone if you don't have enough information, but say you start talking to that person, Hey, where'd you go to school? Where'd you grow up? That kind of thing. Then you can start filling in that information, even if it wasn't publicly given on their dating profile. And the reason why I say it's good to check Facebook is because it did happen a handful of times where I checked their Facebook and they weren't active on it, which is fine. I don't think a lot of people, especially our age, use it anymore. But let me tell you, honey, the same photos that were on their Facebook that they haven't been on and updated in two years were the same ones on their dating profile. So that kind of told me of, I don't really know what you look like anymore. Two years, a lot can change. A lot can change. So if you do have a Facebook, make sure you are updating it or you are posting updated photos on your dating app because that was a red flag where I don't even care to converse with you because you're using two year old photos. I don't know what you'll look like. And again, you can be picky when you have the option to and dating apps definitely give you that option. And the last tidbit I'm going to leave you with is the longer you talk to someone on a dating app, there will be red flags. I. I only had this happen once where he had told me, I guess, what he was majoring in um, and what he was wanting to do in life. And then a few messages later, it somehow got re-brought up or something like that. And it was completely different. And I, I called him on it. I was like, mm, a few messages ago, you said you were majoring in this and this is what you wanted to do in life and blah, blah, blah. And now you're saying you're majoring in this. So which is it? And he got all weird. And then obviously it fizzled out because I'm like, caught you. I caught you catfish. But one thing, if you get anything out of the video, this is the most important. It is to not waste your own time or anyone else's time on those dating apps or just communicating with someone before meeting up with them. Catfishes are always going to try and put off meeting up for as long as they possibly can. That way, you know, like maybe y'all can be one of those MTV stories where you've created this bond and whatever. And it's like, you know what? Even if I show up and I don't look like my pictures, he's still gonna love me for me because I got him in my web kind of thing. 
But I would say my rule of thumb is don't let that go a week. Do not be talking to someone longer than a week before meeting up with them. Me and my husband actually, and this isn't always the case, but it worked out. Me and my husband matched and met on the same day. It was one of those very just spur of the moment, hey, I'm not doing anything tonight, you wanna to meet up kind of thing. And we did and it worked out. I'm not saying it's always going to work out that way, but you are wasting your own time the longer you prolong meeting up because you can talk and talk and talk, but until you see someone in person and either feel that attraction or one, verify their identity, or another thing is some people just aren't good at texting and messaging. And so meeting up with them in person really gives them that shot to work out <laughs> with you. Um, and it's definitely like, I personally am that person where we either click or we don't. Um, so that was always a really good way for me to test it out versus let me talk to you for a month before meeting up. I don't think so. I don't have time for that. And like I said earlier, I do think a lot of people aren't the best communicators through text. So this gives everyone a fair shot. I hope you enjoyed this video. And the next video I'm posting is, let me see. Okay, the next video um, coming up in this series is why you may not be getting any messages or matches on the dating apps. So definitely try and keep an eye out for that video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.